Welcome to Electron Online. In this video and the ones to follow, we're going to take a closer look at the concept of inductance. And we're going to start with what we call mutual inductance. So the word inductance is kind of a strange word. It's related to something we call an inductor. A better word for inductor is called a coil. A coil is simply a wire that's wound around a circular or I should say cylindrical object. So let's say you take a a cardboard or a wooden cylinder and you wrap a wire around that, you have yourself a coil or an inductor. And it's interesting because remember that when you put a current through a wire, when you have a current existing in a wire, you'll have a magnetic field around it. But when you then take that wire and you coil it around like that, the magnetic field rearranges itself so that the magnetic field goes right through the coil. So what I have here is I have two coils. Now instead of having two long coils, I have two very short coils, but they have a number of times turns in the coil. Turns means the number of times that the wire goes around the loop like that. And let's say that we, in, that we have a battery causing a current to exist in coil number one. Let's say we start out with a steady state current. So there's a current going around like this from the back towards the front. If you then take your fingers and you curl them in the direction of the current, your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field inside the coil. Now notice if we place a second coil nearby the first coil you can see that some of the magnetic field lines will go through the second coil as well. Now remember, these field lines are steady state. There's a steady state current. The current is not changing. The field exists and some of the field lines, some of the flux, magnetic flux, goes through the second coil. And because of that, there's some sort of interaction. And so there's some sort of inductance on the second coil because of the presence of the first coil and have a current in the first coil. Now that effect is called mutual inductance, and we use the letter M for that. So we use the letter M for mutual inductance, and we'll explain in just a moment what that means. Now, notice that if I take this second coil and I place it farther away from the first coil, the effect on the second coil will be less, so therefore the mutual inductance will be less. If I bring the second coil closer to the first coil, more the magnetic flux will go through the second coil and therefore the mutual inductance, the mutual effect will be greater. So definitely the geographical location of the coil does make a difference. Also, if I have more turns in the second coil, the effect will then be magnified that many times. For example, if I have n coil or n turns instead of one, I should say, and if I have 10 turns instead of one turn, the effect would be tenfold. If I have 100 turns, the effect would be 100fold. So you can also see that the mutual inductance have to, has to do with uh, how many turns or coils I have in the first loop. Also, if I have more loops in the, in the first coil right here, that will also cause a greater effect to exist in the second coil. It also will be magnified. So finally, we can come up to an equation that says, that the mutual inductance is related to, first of all, how much current I have in the first loop. If I double the current, I'll have double the effect on the second loop. If I have more turns in the second loop, that will cause a greater amount of effect. And if I have more flux going to the second loop, and of course that depends upon where the loop is located. Farther away, it'll be less flux, closer by, there'll be more flux. So finally, we can come up with an equation defined in terms of the mutual inductance where the mutual inductance on the second coil caused by the effect of the first coil is equal to how many loops we have in the second coil. The more loops, the more the effect. How much flux makes it through the coil. Again, if it's farther away, it's less. If it's closer, it's more. And how strong the current is. For example, if I have a really strong current, I would expect a strong effect, but that's not really due to ge the, the geometry of the situation. So therefore, I cannot take claim, for example, of having a lot of effect because I have a lot of current in the first one. It does affect it, but it doesn't cause that mutual inductance to exist. So basically, the mutual inductance is, is a ratio of how big the effect is on the second uh, loop per amount of current that drives the first loop. So if I double the current in the first loop, I expect double the effect, but that's not really what we're into, what we're after. We're after understanding ge the geometric situation in other words, the greater the number of coils or the greater the number of loops and the greater amount of uh, magnetic flux coming through there, for example, I can make this loop a lot bigger. If I make the loop a lot bigger, I'll have more flux going through it. If I have more turns or more coils, I'll have 
more flux going through it, or at least the effect will be greater. And so the mutual inductance is basically a measure of how big an effect, based on the number of turns, and how much flux goes through the second loop, as, as a function of how much current goes through the first loop. All right, so now that we have kind of a feel for that, here we have a steady state situation, so nothing will happen in the second loop, just that we know there's some mutual inductance there. Now, what happens is, when I begin to change the current in the first loop, because once I begin to change the current in the first loop, that means that the amount of flux, magnetic flux going in the second loop, will change as well. If I increase the current, I will increase the flux. If I decrease the current, I will decrease the flux in the second loop, and that will begin to have a real effect on the second loop. Remember that uh, Faraday's law said that the, that the EMF induced in a coil is equal to the number of loops in the coil, and how fast the flux changes per unit time. So going back to the idea that if we start changing the current in the first loop, something's going to happen in the second loop. And again, what we can do is we can take this equation and take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. And so on the left side, we get N2, the number of loops in the second loop, times how fast the flux is changing the second loop is equal to the mutual inductance between the two loops times the change, how fast the current is changing in the first loop. And since we know that the EMF induced in the second loop will be equal to the number of loops or the number of turns in the second loop times the, the how fast the flux is changing, and since this quantity right here is equal to this quantity right here, we can write in a different way. We can write that the EMF induced, the voltage induced, which will drive a current in the second loop, is equal to minus the mutual inductance between the two, the two uh, coils times the change in the current with, res with respect to time, and we mean the change in the current in the first loop. So here we can see that by changing the current in the first loop, one way to determine now what the effect will be on the second loop is to say that the EMF induced in the second loop, which will drive a current in the second loop, is equal to the mutual inductance between the two loops, and again the mutual inductance is determined by this equation right here, times how fast the current is changing in the first loop. So, a mutual inductance meaning an effect of the on the second loop caused by the first loop in their geometric location, in their geometric shapes, and how much flux goes through the second loop caused by the first loop, and how fast the current is changing, from that we can determine how much of an EMF is it produced or induced in the second loop. And that's what we call mutual inductance. Now, it turns out we can turn the tables around. Let's say that I want to know if I now start driving a current in this loop, and I have no current being driven in that loop, is there mutual inductance in the opposite direction? The answer is yes. You can say that the mutual inductance on loop number one caused by loop number two. Notice I switched the subscripts around. So now let's say I change things around. I don't have a current here, but I have a current there. What will be the mutual inductance on this coil caused by the, what's happening in that coil? Well, then you can say that this is equal to the number of coils in the first loop times the amount of the flux, magnetic flux that goes through the first loop divided by the current in the second loop. And it turns out that M12 and M21 are identical. It doesn't matter. If we don't change the shape, if we don't change the size, if we don't change the location of the two coils, the mutual inductance from 1 on 2 and the mutual inductance from 2 on 1 is exactly the same. So therefore we can say that M12 is equal to M21. We can simply just call it mutual inductance. We don't need a subscript. And so finally we can say that the EMF induced in the second loop is equal to the negative of the mutual inductance between the two loops times how fast the current is changing in the other loop or the mutual the uh, EMF induced in the oop I didn't want to say the second loop but I want to say the first loop in the first loop is equal to minus the mutual inductance between the two loops times how fast the, the current is changing in the second loop and basically this defines what mutual inductance is mutual inductance is such that you have two coils close together, and you change the current in the one coil, it will induce an EMF in the second coil. And if you change the current in the second coil, it will induce an EMF in the first coil. And the mutual inductance is simply defined by either 
how many turns you have in one coil times how much flux you have going through that coil caused by the, the other coil divided by the current in the other coil or you can come over here and say well you can turn the tables around and say the mutual inductance can also be defined as the product of the number of coils in the first uh, coil times the flux in the first coil by what's caused in the second coil divided by the current in the second coil and hopefully that clears it up. Mutual inductance is simply the effect one coil has on another and it's exhibited in a way when the current changes to the one coil how will it affect the second coil how will it induce an EMF and if the current is changed in this coil how will the EMF be induced in that coil and that's what we mean by mutual inductance